My name is Nancy Hernandez, and joining me today is Terry King. Thank you, Terry, for being with us. You're and welcome. Sharing your memories. You were just mentioning that when you first moved into town, you immediately got involved. When did you move to town, and what were some of the first things that you did? Well, it was 27 years ago, and our kids were in um, elementary school and middle school. And so we got them both involved into some kind of sport or whatever. And so my son was involved in football and baseball with Maya, and uh, my daughter uh, started to cheer for Maya. And uh, we were helping, just being a helping parent, and before we knew it, Bob became the president of Maya, and I became the recording secretary or whatever. There were two different secretaries. I can't remember which one. So when I was doing the newsletter, and, and here we were. We were on the board. I mean, it was instant. And, um, and we just started knowing people, and we made some of our best friends through Maya. And, uh, and then Bob had gotten involved in um, the Parks and Recs through Maya and was doing Parks and Recs for about 12 years, which is what, how he got involved in the town and got on the council and stuff like that. So that started that end. So, um, and then mine just kind of went all over the place from there. And you've been very involved in the arts. Can you talk yes. a little bit about getting the art scene going here? Yeah, um, one day I, I had this great idea of, of um, doing an, an art show. And, um, and I thought, well, wouldn't that be kind of fun to do? And, and um, we were headed to a Christmas MML dinner um, with uh, Pat, the mayor, and um, and I just so happened to mention it to him that, you know, I really wanted to do something like this, and he turned around, he goes, do it, just do it, and I went, oh, okay, so it was just going to be like one exhibit, I was, you know, and all this kind of stuff, and, but what happened was I started to work on it, and it, and I decided, well, you know what, I just want to see what people are thinking in this town, so we had a meeting, and that's where the Arts Alliance was born. I, you know, I turned it into an alliance and, well, we called it the Arts Council, but um, we found out we couldn't really um, do that. So we changed the name, but um, that's where the Arts Alliance came from. It was born there and I was running it for about two years until I stepped down and it sort of waxed and waned a little bit, but it's waxing again and, and um, you know, coming back alive. So. I remember meeting you there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. that's right. And then you've been also very involved with the farmer's market, so talk to us about that. Um, yeah, I, I uh, started helping Alice um, in the evenings. Since I work in Gaithersburg, it's, it's hard for me to get back in time to really do much more of anything, so I'm part of the cleanup crew. <laughs> that's the fun part. <laughs> and how did the farmer's market get started? Do you know? Um, I think, well, Alice is very um, into the agriculture end of things. And I think that uh, she came to Pat and she wanted to, I think it was either Pat or maybe it was Ellie, I can't remember, but um, was talking to them about how we could make it better and bigger. And so it started off a little bit smaller than it is now, but it really, it grew. She really worked hard on it and it just grew like wildfire. I mean, it's, it's a great farmer's market. So if you were going to talk about Mount Airy to someone who'd never been here, wasn't familiar with Mount Airy, what would you, what would you highlight? What would you tell them? Well, it's, it's all depending on what is important to them and what they enjoy. Um, if you enjoy the arts and if you enjoy that type of thing, you know, I would say get involved in the arts because the Arts Alliance is still going. They, they have an art festival coming up. I've been putting art exhibits down into Town Hall every other month. I'm a little bit off this month because of our move. So, you know, I'm, I'm behind a little bit, but uh, there should be one coming in June soon. And, um, and there's music involved in it, and, uh, and we're trying to get this next exhibit in with the festival that's coming, the Arts Festival. And we're going to try to see how we can blend in everything from Watkins Park all the way into Town Hall. So we're going to try to bleed it all the way through rails to trails and in here into Town Hall. So, um, so that's going to be the next exhibit. So if, you, if anybody likes that sort of thing that's coming up, and there's plenty of places to eat and dine, um, before you come to an exhibit, you know, we usually have an open, um, an open exhibit um, on a Saturday night. So it's, it's kind of fun. You can go out to eat and then come in here. We usually have some kind of wine or some kind of uh, alcoholic drink and a little snack or something to nibble on. Um, and if you're not into that scene, there's, there's the sports scene where Maya, I mean, Maya's there, Lenganor, um, Luya, all kinds of uh, sports activities going on all over the place. So I mean, if you're into the sports, uh, there's plenty of sports around in this town. So there's, there's that too. And talk, talk to me a little bit about 
your neighborhood, the people that you know that you live in your neighborhood and My other people in community and yeah. I, I love where we live. I, I really do. I love, I love our neighborhood. And, um, you know, we were the second people in our court. And um, there was only when um, we were, were a Mitchell Best community. So um, they had one end of it built, and we were the second people of the second, uh, I guess, part of that. And uh, so we got to know our neighbors as they each moved in. So we, we've seen some people come and go. And, and all, but we've had, um, we had a little neighborhood, um, like a picnic, like a, I don't know, block party type thing, uh, you know, from time to time we would do that. Um, I mean, you just get to know everybody. You, you, you know, we walk around the neighborhood and you just talk to people and stuff like that. Um, so. Now you and your husband, Bob, are both very involved in town and very friendly and like, yeah. you know, people <laughs> that really get things going here. What are some of the things that you're most proud about that have taken place in town? Well, there's a lot. I, 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 there is a, a whole lot. Um, first off, I'm proud of my husband for being a part of the town council and being a part of a town council that got some things going and, and you know, moving forward. And I, I, I look forward to Center Street opening up, I think that, and that was huge. You know, I mean, even though you don't see anything now, um, it just took a lot of uh, a lot of the community input and everything else, and then they hired a company, and they're working on putting all the ideas and stuff together. So that's a real, real plus. Um, so I, I hopefully we'll be able to see that you know come to life one day. I, mean, I wish it were sooner than later, but I think it's going to be later because it just takes time to get all this stuff together. Um, that's something, and the, of course the arts I'm, we're really proud of. I love my church, and I'm involved in my church. That I'm really proud of. The things that I've done there, um, the services that I've been a part of, the things that we've started. Um, and uh, Bob's always supported me in what I've done, and I've always supported him in what he's done. It's like when we started a more service, it's called more. Um, it's now changing. We decided to change it, but he came to every one of the services that we did because to support me comes to every one of the arts things to support me helps me hang if I need him to help helps me do whatever I need help with um, him and the town council I mean if he needs a flyer if he needs something done you know I'm always doing it for him he need he's going somewhere he wants company I'm going with him to, to do it so there is so much in this town to be involved in um, that even things that I don't even know that are that are around that you know so when you're out with Bob and you're talking to people and hearing their concerns and their likes and their interests, what are some of the things that people tell you about Don Airy? Um, well, they're, they're really sorry he's leaving. <laughs> That's the one thing. It's like everywhere we go, he's got somebody coming in going, why are you going? <laughs> you know? So there, there's that. But um, I don't know. I mean, people, they talk to him more than, than me, but I do listen to what people are saying and stuff like that. And sometimes their little their concerns are little concerns that are personal to them. But a lot of times there's a, a reason for it or it is being worked on. They just haven't seen it yet. Um, you know, a lot of people in, in Wildwood were, were concerned about the, the, um, the condos that they were going to build. And the condos really, they, they have nothing to be worried about because they're for people that are going to be 55 and older instead of and, and they don't have young children and you know they're it's going to follow the same suit it's just going to be like a little bit younger and and it, they're going to be fine you know so we hear those kind of concerns and you know oh and let's not forget when tj maxx is going to open <laughs> That's, it's like what <laughs> again <laughs> That's so, true. It's probably the funniest thing on, on Facebook right now is when's TJ Maxx going to open. I'm telling you, the, the, the replies are hysterical. That's true. It might be nice to mention a little bit about what all happened. Can you, Would you be willing to share about the tornado? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we, we were lucky because it missed, totally missed us. Totally missed us. But, um, but we saw and heard like the wind and we were like going what the heck I mean because it was crazy strong and um, and we walked out to the door and it was just going sideways and we were like what the heck's going on so we didn't know what was going on and and um, so I was browsing through Facebook for a little bit and I said Bob somebody said something about a tornado so we hopped in the car because you know I mean town councilman got, got to check it out right 
And I mean, we saw the devastation, you know, and stuff like that. And then the next day we got in and we saw, and it was really horrific. It was, it was awful, you know? And I thought, and this, this town, it says, that's just not even heard of, you yeah. know? But there was a lot of damage, but we were very, very lucky. And I feel like people have come together and they created a fund to try and help some They did, they did. Um, I think uh, Ellie, uh, they have a, uh, a committee for that and they did and they were kind of weaning out the committee and, and then all of a sudden this happened and they said they brought it back to life because they had to. They wanted to be able to help people because there were people that had such major damage. I mean, look at how long it's taken. For, seriously, look how long it's taken TJ Maxx to come back. I mean, that wasn't just surface damage. That was damage deep down inside. Yeah. So, and they were pretty much the target, that whole, that whole area there. Yes. So, tell me about some of the changes that you've seen in the time that you've been here. Um, it seems like I've seen more community involvement, more people getting involved in things. Um, we still need more people. We need a lot of the younger people to start stepping up. And just by looking at what happened with the council, the younger people are starting to get involved. And that's a real plus because in all reality, that's going to be their town. We're going to be leaving eventually one day. And so are some of the other people. I mean, you know, people come and go, and the young people are going to be in charge of this town, and they need to make it the way they want it, what their vision is, because it's different from what our vision is. And so they're really starting to step up now, and, and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen now, because I'm sure it's going to change. So what is your vision? What The arts! <laughs> <laughs> Bring the art. I, I would love to see this town be more involved in the arts. I would love to see more. I would love to have a gallery. My dream was to 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 have a, a community center gallery area and, and make it so that the community could use it for many other things, but have a gallery area and and have a place for people to come and um, and a constant exhibit going on. And almost like a Della Plain type situation. I mean, I would love that where we could do classes and, and you know, shows and a place where people could do theater and where music can be, where it's not too loud in the town hall and it's not, not loud enough, you know, out on the street and where there's a place that everybody could go and enjoy. Uh, that's what I would like to see. That's what, that was my vision. I would like that too. Yeah, I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. What would you consider to be some fun spots to hang out like for fun when you just go to chill? Um, well, if you're a Starbucks person, that's kind of a neat place to go. That's where everybody likes to go. But um, I, I like going to the restaurants. I, I love going to Lorienzo's and sitting out on the deck. I love going to um, the Mount Airy Tavern and sitting outside and drinking. I, mean, you, I have a drink and have dinner and, and you can see people milling around and doing whatever it is that they're doing. Um, I'm a people watcher, so I like to see that. I love, um, I mean, I, I just, I can sit out on the bench and just watch people walking by. I mean, I just, I just I like to see what people are getting into. So I don't know, I, I kind of like all that kind of stuff. Share some of your favorite memories from town, from either with your kids or? Uh -huh. Boy, that's a, that's a, I have to dig down deep for that. Um, well, my recent favorite memories were the very first art exhibit that we did. Um, it was really exciting for me because it was, it was, it, all of a sudden it was all, it was right here. It, it, it was happening. You know, I found um, my confidence through that, which is another amazing thing because I've never been very self-confident. So, um, and to see it come together and become successful was, was a big one. And, and then doing the exhibits down there now, um, great. The, yeah, they, they, they just get, they're so big and, and, and we've had so many people coming in that it's, it's very, it's awesome. And, uh, so those are, those are some memories and just, just going to the games that my kids were cheering at or playing in the baseball games. And, you know, I'd be keeping score for the baseball team and, and Bob would be the coach and, you know, or Jesse's cheering and Bob's up and up, up in the, the, um, where they, they keep the scoring and stuff like that, you know, the booth, whatever the booth is. And, um, and he'd be up there and I'd be down and we'd all be cheering together and, and you know, taking pictures and, um, you know, th those memories will never go away. Those memories I hold very close to my heart because they were some really good times. We had, we had met so many great people and just Maya parents getting together and, and 
having a party, you know, I mean, and, and, and dancing and, and stuff. They're just some of the best memories that we've had and, you know, met some great people through it. Now, Terry, you're a photographer. Yes. So, and you've taken a lot of pictures all over. What are some of the best spots for photos? Oh, boy, everywhere. This is a great <laughs> town for photos. But if you go walk on rails to, or, um, rails to trails, there's plenty of pictures on rails to trails. I mean, just really interesting, like, you know, the different molds or, I know molds, and, and the stone and the water dripping down or, you know, the trees or the, the um the tr you know like the trunk of the trees or the um i'm losing my words here the uh roots roots you know coming out and coming down and and the things that grow the these i don't even know what these things are called that come out of the trees but they're like whips almost where they come out of the tree i mean there's so much there on rails to trails to take pictures of that it's it's crazy the caboose it's an awesome place to take pictures i mean you can break the caboose down into pieces and um, you go to Watkins Park and there's a place in Watkins Park, it's all the way up on top of the hill. You can see forever up on the top. It's the best view in this whole town, you know? So, I mean, if you're, if you're walking around, um, there, you can, you can get some great, great pictures there. Um, I'm trying to think of where else, where else to go. I mean, it's anywhere. I mean, it's just, there's a lot of places in this town. I mean, some of the architecture in this town, some of the houses. Um, you know, go to the firehouse and, and sit and watch a sunset. Ah, you, can't. You, you there is no better place to go watch a sunset than sitting on the back of the hill right behind the fire company. And I, I've been caught by many people sitting back there and they drive by, they honk, they stop, they start talking to me and I'm sitting on that hill with my camera waiting for that sun to set. I've gotten some of the best pictures there. Now you also photographed the caboose coming in. I did. Would you talk a little bit about the project of getting the caboose here and um, so a lot of that was um, Larry, and um, so he kind of was really involved in it, But and I just happened to be unemployed at the time when they were refurbishing it. So I was able to climb in the car with him and go up there and see it in stages as it was being um, done, and I took pictures of it in stages and, um, of, and uh, of them painting the numbers that are on the caboose. I mean, the, the fine detail up to like before when it was just a shabby old little mess and and you know and I and I would get deep down to the you know the grooves of you know the wood and and the the metal that was flaking or rusting and and now how it's all polished and painted and it's beautiful yeah I've been inside of it before and I've been inside of it after and all in between so it was a, it was a fun fun thing to to be photographing that's for sure and that was with Larry Hushauer. That was with Larry Hushauer. Okay. And when you moved here, were there still train tracks? Yes. Okay. Tell about a little bit about what it looked like there and what you like. If you well, saw I trains, really, yeah. Running no, there. I've no, I've never seen any trains going through at all. No, there weren't train tracks as usable train tracks. But they still crossed over Main Street. Um, no, they didn't. I don't think they still crossed. I don't remember. I know that our, um, there were train tracks. Well, because the, the tracks were usable when the cold storage place was there. So, and I remember all that, and I remember how loud it was and noisy it was. And, and my girlfriend, um, one of my friends from high school, used to live literally right across the street. And I used to think, how the heck did they, were they able to live with that just clanking and banging and, and all? But I guess it just becomes a part of everyday life. And it's like my grandmother lived right off of Beers Mill Road right there. And you could hear the traffic all the time, and it just became white noise. Wow as opposed to noise noise so I can even now you can still occasionally hear a train whistle passing through town which oh yeah I, I yeah I, I hear them all the time because we've got because where we live the train you know we have to go um, to Rising Ridge Road um, not to Rising Ridge but is it 144 and the train goes right across there so we can still hear the train pretty good yeah I think that's yeah nice. that's I, train town. I grew I grew up in Kensington and we we had Kengar we had the whole train town so I mean you, we heard the trains too coming so it, to me that was that's a, a good sound yeah yeah I agree are there any stories that you would like to share or any anything in particular that you would want preserved I think I shared all my stories <laughs> You know, it's hard to think of them on the spot. Isn't it's, it? Well, you know, it, it, because you know I, the stories of the of the Arts Alliance and and you know finding the confidence. I mean, even my husband was 
like shocked because people were walking in for them. I was always very, really shy and reserved. And the very first meeting that I had, people were walking in. I was walking up to them, shaking their hand, introducing myself. They'd tell me who they were. I would mention them by name. I remembered who they were the next meeting. And, and I was talking in front of people, and I was totally comfortable. And my husband walked out going, who are you? <laughs> it's like, who, who are you? Because that's not who I was. It happened that fast. It happened that fast. So, you know, that, that's, that's funny for me. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Now, your, your kids went to school here, right? Yes. What were some of their experiences that they had in schools? Well, we won't talk about my son because his experiences weren't so positive. But he did graduate. I, I will say we got him through graduation. That's a plus. And then off to the Army he went, and I'm not quite sure that was a plus. But uh, he did learn one thing, and that was how to drink. So we'll just cut that out. But um, my daughter, on the other hand, <laughs> um, she got involved in um, cheerleading all the way through. So she was a cheerleader from first grade all the way through high school all the way into college and all the way through college. So she cheered for the NCAA. She cheered for um, uh, May, uh, Langenor. And they started doing competitions. And uh, so we got involved in all that. So we were part of the parents that were involved in helping and doing and going and, and making sure and watching and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so we were very involved in, in that end of stuff. And, um, and uh, so we rode that her back for many years with the cheerleading stuff we had a blast i mean eric went all the way through baseball and then after baseball was over and that was so much fun and then jesse's cheering just went all the way through college so we got to enjoy all that too and that was football and basketball and <clears throat> and all those kind of things and and just being involved in those things now what changes have you seen in terms of the school or things for kids to do and like, how is it different for parents raising their children now than when you were raising yours? Huh, that's a good question. Since I'm already done raising my kids, I don't know what other people are doing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Probably unfair uh, question. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I think uh, kids are really uh, getting more involved in stuff, but I just don't know what kind of things they're really getting involved in. I mean, like our sports were, um, were baseball, football, and cheerleading, but now there's lacrosse, which is huge now. That then that was not even part of anything, you know. So there's a lot of changes in that like basketball has gotten huge. Yeah. Um this pickleball, whatever, you know, my sister used to play it and all of a sudden now there's pickleball. You know, and apparently that's really big. So it's kind of neat to see it all come around. So That's true. We even have pickleball courts now. Yeah. Yeah. And they used to be uh like little rolling hockey courts with roller skates and they would do a little hockey but then it that kind of died away and now it's pickleball and there's somebody on the court all the time it's like wow I don't even know what it is I mean I remember my sister talking about it but I have no clue what it is yeah I want to try it yeah me too <laughs> all right hmm do you have family here in town not anymore my husband he's family yeah <laughs> and well, my friends are family what brought you to town I don't even know. I don't even really know. Uh, we were talking to our real estate agent. Um, we had a house, our house for sale in Frederick, and uh, we wanted to go into a smaller town type situation. And he kind of brought us here. Um, was showing us a couple houses here, and he showed us a couple houses other places. But we really, there was something about Mount Airy. I had a friend that lived in Mount Airy, raised her kids here too, and I knew that she loved it. So, um, and uh, I had requirements what I wanted my house to have. I wanted a front porch that was usable. I wanted at least, um, I wanted more than a quarter of an acre lot. You know, I wanted maybe a half an acre if possible, which we got really close to. So I got both. I got the beautiful porch I love and I got the great backyard. You know, and it just had everything, everything that we wanted. You know, and, and we thought we really liked the house. So that's really what brought us in. And, and the town was fine too. We've been in town a couple times trying to buy a house in town and the guy that the first person that was showing us places were showing us places that were already sold and we didn't get it. We were like, why are you showing us places that are sold? I don't get it. So we stopped and then tried again later and ended up here. That's yeah. how we ended up here. All right. Good. Well, okay. thank you, Terry, for t talking with us. Oh, you're welcome. And good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>